when I was growing up. Uh, I love sports. I played a lot of football, a lot of baseball, a lot of soccer, believe that or not, a lot of soccer. And, uh, of course, once music came into my life, it took over everything, and I pretty much gave all that up. So I hope that answers your question. Rock and roll. I don't know how to get this to pull up more. It says I'm live, though. Y'all got any questions? Ask them, because... Come here, dude. <laughs> I feel like uh, Howard Stern on the morning show. It's just a good old boy and me. That's right. I hope y'all enjoyed the uh, acoustic performance. Is it still whiskey and weed for Vinny? And this comes from Brandon. Of course, dude. Uh, hard stuff leads to bad things for people, and uh, I do believe that... Uh, Vodka is actually what I'm drinking these days, and I really enjoy it. And it's very good for you. Very good for your liver. All right, so uh, next one from Sabrina. Uh, this is kind of a strange question. Uh, it says, what influence has the death of Dimebag had on my music career? Uh, obviously, it's a very, very tragic loss and something that was very, very difficult for me to carry on with but I know this is exactly what he wants me to be doing and I'm carrying the torch for him so uh, long live dying back forever all right here we go this is from uh, Sumner it says uh, what do you guys think about the evolution of metal hardcore metalcore etc uh, don't get too wrapped up in all the scenes the different things that are going on I'm really uh, just into what I do with hell yeah which is a combination of you know heavy metal heaviest music I've ever been a part of always with uh, a southern flair, uh, also with a, a more of a rock and roll side and a more of a bluesy side. So it's something that uh, it's been a lot of fun for me. It's definitely a deviation for all of us, and uh, hopefully uh, this will last a long time. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Comment from Ill Little Hellions it says, uh, "Which do you prefer, large festivals or small venues?" It's a very good question. Both of them are extremely kick-ass. You cannot beat the intimacy of playing to 500 people or maybe 40 people like we just did out here. It's amazing. But the energy and, the, and the, just the vibrance of playing to 80,000 people, 100,000 people at Donington or any of those kind of things are hard to beat, too. So I, I really enjoy them both. This one comes from Jason E. When you were on tour with Pantera, who was your favorite band to tour with and to party with? That's a very easy question. 1994, Far Beyond Driven Tour, we had Typo Negative open up for us for over 200 shows, and we had a blast. You had the Texans and the Brooklyn guys, and we got on great. We had a blast, and it was a, an amazing tour. Really enjoyed it, and never forget it. Man. All right, comment from Ronnie. How did I meet Chad? That's a great question. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, they already started uh, deciding uh, that they wanted to put a band together outside of uh, – Mudvayne and Nothing Face and Chad and Tom were the first two to put it together. And uh, and then they got, uh, let's see, uh, the old bass player from Nothing Face, Jerry, was part of it at the time. And uh, they brought Greg in and they started looking for drummers and my name started coming up. And uh, I'd never met any of these guys before except Tom uh, from when Nothing Face toured with us. And uh, we all got on the phone. We liked each other and they all flew to Texas about four or five days later and we just found out we had a lot in common. We did a lot of barbecue and we did a lot of drinking and the next day we wrote our first Hell Yeah song together called uh, Nausea and that's how it all came together, man. Let's see. Next one. Read somewhere that you are working on a second Damage Plan album. Is there any truth to that? There are some uh, Damage Plan demos that me and my brother had made before uh, the tragedy that happened and uh, they're very good, by the way. Uh, we had found uh, the direction that we wanted to go with Damage Plan. I think it would have been really strong and really would have solidified the band. But as uh, far as plans on putting it out, not right now. You know, I think at some point in time people might want to hear it. But uh, right now I'm really focused on you know doing what I'm doing and uh, moving forward. So let's see what we got here. Mark P. C. Or Mark P. It says, uh, what do you think of the rest of the guys would be doing if you guys never decided to get into music uh, what other jobs could you see yourselves doing well i'd like to be a gynecologist that wouldn't be such a bad deal now would it <laughs> of course i'm sure you get to see some bad ones along with the good ones too but that'd be fun uh chad chad used to do construction work so i think he would probably be building houses uh tomcat he's a character man i, I think tomcat would probably be uh some kind of movie star or something uh Zilla would probably be a professional surfboarder. 
out on the ocean having some fun and and greg geez he's so quiet man i, I had no idea what he would do if he wasn't a musician he would probably uh kill himself <laughs> that's greg he loves music man so uh, that's what everybody would be doing how long's my chest here from hammock banana hammock <laughs> you can see it's probably i don't know all i got to say is paul stanley ain't got shit on me all right i'll leave it at that man let's see wes bl strussersburg or some bs like that uh, any thoughts of going on tour with black label society Love Zach, love the society. It'd be awesome to tour with them, but uh, right now there's not any current plans. But if it ever comes along, we'd be more than happy to do it with them. It says uh, from Nikal, that's a strange one. Uh, Can you come to Earth Day Birthday? I was here last year. I've been here many times. It's a great concert. It's a great event. It's a great time. Unfortunately, hell yeah, I was not scheduled to play it this year. I believe we're going to be in. Uh, I think Japan, either Japan, Philippines, or Taiwan at that time. So uh, if you happen to be over there, you can see us. Otherwise, come to the great Earth Day birthday bash. Let's see. All right, from Sarah. Let's see what she has to say here. I know this may sound silly. I know what you're thinking. Uh, so if it sounds silly, it might be a, a silly answer. Uh, it says, but from one drummer to another, how does it feel being out front with the guys instead of stuck in the back? I guess you're talking about this acoustic thing. It's a blast, man. I mean, every drummer's trying to get to the front of the stage. You know, we need just as much spotlight as everybody else. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's these acoustic things are really cool. We're just now starting to get kind of comfortable doing them. We've, we've not done a whole lot of this in the past, and uh, so it's still kind of a work in progress for us, but it's a lot of fun. All right, let's see. From Les Paul. I didn't know he was still alive, but all right. It says, uh, what's my favorite town to play? Wow, I'll tell you, uh, on this tour, it's so far north, I would never think those people know how to rock, but uh, we played Portland, Maine a couple of nights ago, and it was absolutely incredible. Portland, Maine, uh, Baltimore was amazing, and, uh, you know, playing the hometowns, Dallas and Las Vegas is always a blast, and then the Midwest, man, you just can't beat the Midwest. Chicago, Detroit, Milwaukee, those are just, I don't know what they put in the water up there, but those people are crazy, man. They get into it. All right. All right, here we go. They're, they're cutting me off. They've they got the cue cow over here. It's got the cue card. It says i got three or four more. Uh, let's see. Uh, from number one, hell yeah. Any chance I will be working with David Allen Coe again? Tell you what, man, he's getting up there. He's pretty busy. He's, you know, always on tour, always doing his thing. I, I love David. I've had so much fun working on the Rebel Meets Rebel project with him and my brother. And uh, we'll just see, you know, what happens in the future. You never know. Uh, from Ashley. It says, what do you guys do in your downtime? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> uh, you know, we do a lot of drinking. You know, uh, we like to get out and about, man. We play some golf. We go fishing. We do a lot of barbecuing. And uh, really, we just want to enjoy our time when we're out there, you know. We, you don't catch us uh, sitting around the hotel room watching the Flintstones on a day off or something. You know, we got to get out and find something to do. And let's see. I think we'll call this the last one. This is from X Cornex, whoever that is. What's my favorite live concert experience of all time? Well, that's a tough one, man. A uh, couple of them. In 92, uh, when we opened up for uh, Metallica and ACDC in uh, Russia for the Monsters of Moscow Rock Fest. It was the first uh, Western concert over there after the coup, and we played to nearly a million people, which is twice as big as Woodstock. And they treated us like Led Zeppelin, man. It was amazing. And then probably... Uh, Getting to do the KISS reunion tour with Pantera back in 96. Uh, we played all over South America with them, and it was, you know, Brazil and everywhere you can think of, and it was all 80, 90,000 seat football stadiums. And uh, we were always, you know, huge KISS fans, and to be able to grow up listening to their music, be a fan of theirs, and then be playing with them, what a dream come true, become friends with them. I remember on my birthday, uh, we played three sold out nights in a row in Mexico City. And we were flying from Mexico to Santiago, Chile. And uh, we were all on the same plane together. And all the KISS guys were in first class. And we were in the business class. And it was my birthday. And about halfway through the flight, all four of them came back, saying happy birthday to me, four-part harmony, gave me the brand-new 280-page KISS history book, all autographed and signed. And, I mean, I started crying. It was like a 14-year-old kid getting to meet his idols. And, and, and they were so cool. We had just had a great time touring with them. And uh, we're still really good friends. And, of course, it was all the original members still then, so it was the real deal. On that note, I'm going to see you guys later. Hopefully we'll see you tonight at the Hard Rock Live here in Orlando. 
I want to thank everybody here at JJR for uh, putting this thing together. It's been a great time. See you at the Earth Day birthday bash also. I'll be in Japan. You'll be here. And that's it. That's Vinnie Paul over and out. Uh, cool. That was awesome. Thanks awesome. a lot, man. I know.